convertible. So play the game again, inside or outside, you hear? I mean, you are holding... uh... me, you know. Oh god, this is it, isn't it? The Neptunia Retrospective. Or maybe better yet, the Neptrospective, since Nep is a noun, verb, and whatever else it needs to be. Started as a game series on the PS3 about personified console girls, Neptunia is probably the most successful game series that isn't actually successful. 16 localized games sit at an average of 63 meta score, yet it just won't die somehow. Not that I wanted to die, but apparently either Compi Heart or Ideal Factory wants it too. So the first game, Hyper Dimension Neptunia, started as a one-time shitty PS3 game, which is pretty much a reskin of Trinity Universe, which itself was a pretty shitty game. It stars Neptune, a chaotic girl that likes pudding and stripes, and her quest to get rid of her amnesia and return to Celestia to do... something. I actually forget at this point. Almost all main characters in this game are based on a gaming console or some type of company. Neptune is based on the Sega 32X, also known as the Sega Neptune. Noir is based on the PlayStation, most specifically the PlayStation 3. Vert is based on the Xbox, most specifically the 360. And Blonde, who is not pronounced Block, is based on Nintendo, in this case the Wii. Most of the characters that aren't based on consoles are known as makers. Some of them include Nisa, who is based on NIS, the company that makes the Disgaea series. There's Gus, based on the company Gus, who makes the Atelier series. There's IF, also known as Ify, who is based on Ideal Factory, the main publisher of the series. And then there's Compa, based on Compile Heart, the developer of most of the games in this series. And best fucking girl. Anyway, I can't lie. The game was hella bad, the healing was random, the optimization was non-existent, and it was generally a legit shit game. It did have guns though. Its one saving grace was that it was full of super cute girls and a super overreaching script. Ify, you're not one to talk when you're that short and without boobies. If, if reality doesn't work, rely on those 2D girls and your online friends. Don't blame me if I start to collect rings floating by the ground. Ooh, I'm so excited to open the door. I peed a little. Where the girls went around and spent pretty much the entire game trying to kill the big bad R4 who is a parody of the R4 piracy chip, at least in name. And it cannot be understated how much the West ate this up. This pushed Neptunia to be one of Compile's best-selling titles and its flagship series. In an odd turn of events, it somehow sold even more in the West than it did in Japan, which was unusual for a JRPG at the time outside of something like Pokemon. Hey boy, Final Fantasy also sells more in the West, boy. Learn your history, kid. Yeah, okay, no one asked you, though. That said, it did not review very well at all. A lot of the reviews call it out the over-sexualization of girls and the buggy gameplay. It's funny how that's a common complaint of this series, yet no one bats an eye when adults flirt with minors in Persona. I guess when you hide your questionable content behind good music, animal mascots that do backflips when they get a critical hit, and some pretty cool looking menus, no one seems to care. Well actually JB, Persona is an actual good game. You don't need the social link to little girls. Yeah, okay, you do that. And moving on, somehow after that travesty, Neptunia Mark II was greenlit. This game is the start of the new timeline that most of the main series games will follow. It's also the game that revamped most of the battle systems into what you see today. The battle systems no longer based on RNG. You can heal where you want assuming you have the items, you can move where you want, and you can generally take more turns in battle. This new game stars the sisters of the main characters from the previous games. They're all based on handheld versions of the main consoles. Neptune's sister Nepgear, a girl next door type character who's based on the game gear and also a massive tech nerd. There's Noir's little sister Uni, based on the PSP. And then there's Blonde's little sisters Ram and Rom, based on the Nintendo DS. Well, actually, you were just talking about lollies and Persona, and now this game has even smaller girls. That makes it worse than Persona. Yeah, okay, if you say so. This game is also the only NEP game with an M rating. It should be noted that this game is the basis for a lot of reused assets that Compile Heart does, even for non-Neptunia games like Fairy Fencer, Death and Request, 
and Genkai Toki 7 Pirates, Waffle's best girl by the way. The story features Nepgar and her mission to save her sister and the other main goddesses when they got captured, and eventually trying to take down the big bad who is none other than Frieza. Uh, I mean R4. Hey boy, back in my day, the only recurring bosses was Bowser and Ganon and her- Sweet, that's cool. Anyway, this game ironed out a lot of the issues with the first and introduced a lot of new characters that mostly get left out of the spinoffs now. It also has a really infamous ending called the Conquest ending, where the cute main character goes around and kills everyone to power up her super demon sword, and fans were so mad that they threatened to burn down the company that made the game, which forced them to make the next game in a much lighter tone. And last up for the OG3 is Neptunia V, also known as Neptunia Victory. This game was the most polished of the three and the basis for which the remakes were made. A much lighter toned game, it stars Neptune once again, who got sucked into another world, and she meets a younger version of Noir and a new goddess named Plutia, a girl whose voice actor costs so much now that she doesn't appear in any more games. The too long didn't read version of the story is there's now a new group of people, the seven sages specifically, who want to take over the world. There's Rei who represents Atari. Then there's Abness, Mr. Bad, copy paste. I may be queer, but let me lay it straight. Some gay robot. Pikachu and Freeze, I mean R4. You need to be a masochist. Let me trick oh. uh, Actually, JB, there's another little girl there, so that's another point for Persona. Yeah, okay, I don't care. I don't make the games, I just play them. He is right, though, I forgot. There's actually Pishi as well. A girl who was forced to transform into a goddess against her will. For the most part, that's where the main series ends on the PS3. The series took a detour and made Neptunia PP. Hey boy, back in my day, the only PP was in my pants or the PowerPoints on my Pokemon moves. Yeah, sure thing, buddy. In this game, PP stands for producing perfection. The only thing they produced though was yet another bad game. It's alright if you like the character since it's a visual novel, but you it's skippable. So this is the part of the NEP history where it's the rise and also kind of the fall because in late 2013 is around when the series started getting big. Late 2013, early 14 is when Compile Heart released Rebirth 1. This did extremely well despite being only on the Vita at the time. This game was a total remake of the original Neptunia game, using the battle systems and assets from Neptunia Victory. This game was actually a pretty decent RPG in general. Since the main issues with the first game was the gameplay and this game fixed most of it, this game has a lot of content, it's fully voiced in Japanese, and has a decent amount of dubs, and it's portable. It's also rated higher than pretty much every Neptunia game that came before it. And moving on, we finally get the Mega Dimension Neptunia V2. And yes, it's V2 as in Victory 2, as in the sequel to Victory, not 7. I don't know why people keep calling it Neptunia 7, especially fans of the series but maybe they're dumb. I don't know, like how can it be seven when it's the fifth main series game? It literally makes no sense. Anyway, this is probably the only game in the Neptunia series that is a legit good game. It had next gen graphics at the time, at least mostly. It was actually one of the first next gen RPGs on the system. The story's pretty good, it's decent length, and it's full of content. This game came out before game developers started locking all their content behind DLC, and while this game does have some cheap DLC, it's mostly good stuff, like extra characters, extra battles, and they all come with events and stories. The DLC characters are Million Arthur, Nitro Plus, and God Eater. I don't think Million Arthur is available anymore. They're all personifications of their namesakes. And like, the music is also really good in this game. Also, the character animations for attacks are a lot less stiff and they flow a lot better. The game is just a lot less jank overall. I don't want to spoil the game since this is the one I generally recommend to people who can only play one Neptunia game, but in short, it stars Neptune and Nepgear and they get sucked into a different dimension. Original the story, do not steal. And they meet a girl named Uzume who's fighting to save her world. She actually ends up being the goddess of the past planet tune. 
She's based off the Sega Dreamcast herself. A lot of people seem to like Uzume. I don't personally care about her too much, but I do like her transformed state orange heart. She's really cute. This game actually got a remake a few years later. It took away the multiple endings, leaving only the true ending. It added a lot of VR events. Hey boy, the only multiple endings is how many times I clicked off your video, boy. Yeah, I don't care. That still counts as a view, so it works for me. Personally, I found the remake game better overall. Less endings didn't really matter to me since nobody really goes for bad endings unless it's something like Death and Request or something funny. They polished a lot of animations like special attacks, but they did cap the frame rate at 30 for some reason, probably to stop the jank in the Sakura Forest level. Actually, not only did they add more little girls, they also took away the ending, so that's another point for Persona! Now depending on your region, in the next year a lot of Vito titles will come out. I'll just list them by their Japanese release dates for the most part. In 2014 we got Rebirth 2, a remake of Mark 2. Pretty much the same game but it replaces Nisa and Gus with Red and Broccoli. They also got rid of the 3D models in MK2 or Mark 2 that most people don't know about. Next is Hyper Devotion Noir, which was a pretty much a Disgaea, but with Noir. Next was Neptunia Action U, which was just a Sunran Kagura game, but with Neptunia characters and worse. I never liked how Tamsauce phoned it in with their net spinoffs. Like, look at the Shinobi vs. gameplay, which was out at the time. <laughs> And now compare it to Neptunia U. And which one would you rather play? Last of the year was Neptunia Rebirth 3. This one was pretty much just the same as Victory. They added almost all the DLC characters and in-game unlockables from that game though, and just a small bit of improvements. Overall, it was pretty much the same game. I do want to note though that after the first three games, Ideal Factory International opened up a branch over here and started rewriting the scripts from the first three games. So if you play these games, they do have different scripts than the first three. And yeah, if you were keeping count, this series released four games in one year. Like, how many game series do that? They're actually more like how many of those games have little girls in them? All of them, bro. Net was on fire. And in 2016, we got Mega Tag Mention, a game that mostly focused on Blonde and Neptune. And a release that Ideal Factory International botched since they released the game on the PS Vita store like two months early and a lot of people downloaded it way ahead of release. Yet another phone in job from Tamsoft. The game wasn't terrible, but knowing that Estivo Versus was able to run on a Vita at the time, it was just a disappointment gameplay wise. Like, look at this. <laughs> And then look at this, and then tell me which one do you think is better. <laughs> the second game of the year was Super Dimension Neptunia, a game that mostly focused on IF. It pretty much used the same battle system as Rebirth 3 with a few tweaks and features here, and it added the Sega Hard Girls that no one really cares about. Also, if you're wondering why some characters got their own games, Kanpao used to host polls on their site about who the most popular game character is, and the winner would get their own game. Noir won the first poll, Blonde won the second poll, but the results were being botted, and IF got a lot of votes too. So, the pleased fans, they gave Blonde the first game, and then IF ended up getting the second game. Hey boy, you're just mad at Nintendo rules. That's why Blonde won. We don't blame the bots, let's go! If you say so, man. Moving on, this is where the stagnation of the series started. Normally, most game series would have released the main series game by now. Uh, actually, Kingdom Hearts released a lot of spin-offs before they released the main game. Yeah, thanks for the update, but seriously, after this game, we got a release of Cyber Dimension Neptunia. This was the air quotes vert game, the least popular goddess for the most part. The game ran on Unreal Engine and had a hella long load time, like you could literally play levels of entire games before this shit loaded.
The gameplay was okay and the game did look really pretty and it had really good music. This is one of my favorite tracks actually. But it was still kind of jank. Multiplayer was shit, you got logged out after every quest, and it was lag if you weren't the host. It's not all bad though, the music was pretty good for the most part and the story was okay and it's generally considered overall the best Neptunia spinoff and it sold the most as well. Probably from the Sword Art Online hype where getting trapped inside video games and MMOs were the big thing at the time. After this, the Neptunia and Friends game, the mobile app, came out. It was never updated in the West. Then came Nep Nep Connect for the Vita and that closed pretty fast and then we got a remake of Mega Dimension Neptunia in mid-2017. In 2018, someone, somehow, somewhere convinced Compile Heart that letting a Western dev, in this case Artisan Studios who never made a fucking game ever, would be a good choice to make the next Neptunia game. Long story short, the game was shit, but it somehow didn't flop. The limited editions and everything sold out. At this point, it's been about two years since Compile made a real Nep game, so when they announced a new title for the PS4, fans got hyped. Unfortunately, this has turned out to be a Neptunia Rebirth 1 Plus, which was just a re-release of the Steam version for the PS4, which itself was a port of the Vita version, which itself was a remake of the first game. In 2019, Ideal Factory had an April Fool's joke about a Neptunia shooter game, and that became a reality a few months later. And then we make it to 2020. Not only is this Neptunia's 10th anniversary year, it's also the year that VTubers were starting to take off, and with that, Neptunia Virtual Stars was released. This was the first real NEP game released by Compile in about three years. The presentation itself looked good, and it featured a healthy amount of VTubers from Hololive and other brands. The game's website links to all the channels, so it's actually interesting to see who is still active as a VTuber. Actually, I think Sora may be the best girl. Shut the hell up, Twig Boy. Fubuki is best girl. Actually, you both are wrong. Marine is best girl. Anyway, the gameplay is both hack and slash and shooter based. The goddesses use the shooting gameplay and the VTubers use the hack and slash gameplay. The VTubers you can play at are real ones, but it looks like they've been inactive for a while. Either way, the game wasn't really anything special outside of presentation, but it gave fans a bit of hope. Since it showed that Compile Heart could make a pretty looking game and had some kind of funds since they paid to get all these VTubers in it. And here comes the part that really pissed off fans. Let me lay the framework right here so you understand what happened. So in Japan, generally when a series with more than one game or at least one that is long running hits a yearly milestone, it's a pretty big deal. In this case, Neptunia came out in 2010. It is now 2020, so it's Neptunia's 10 year anniversary. Also keep this in mind, there are four mainline Neptunia games. Neptunia 1, Mark 2, Neptunia Victory, and Neptunia V2, as in Victory 2. And now watch this game reveal. Pretty sweet, right? So let's refresh. There are four main games. It's the 10th anniversary. The last mainline game came out in 2015, five years before this announcement. The title has Go in it, which means five in Japanese. Now, any normal person would think one thing, Hyper Dimension Neptunia 5. That's right. The next big announcement was yet another fucking remake of Neptunia 1. This time, a definitive edition of Neptunia 1 Rebirth Plus. That's right, this game is a remake of a remaster, which itself was a re-release of a port on the Steam version of the game, which itself was a port of a remake of the first game. <sighs> ah, fuck, I can't believe you've done this. Needless to say, this was pretty much the last straw for the collective fan base. There were a few holdouts because a few months earlier, there was a Ninja Nep game announced, and that turned out to be a Senran Kagura collab. Like, this could not go wrong. But, as it would turn out, the game itself wasn't too good. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it was pretty much janked, 
and less polished than the best Sanrin games. And part of it is because the Sony censorship shit, but for the most part, it was just mid. It was just more nep when it should have been more Sinran at this point. I mean, would you rather play this? <laughs> or would you rather play this? <laughs> And at this point, morale is at an all-time low. There were a few other things coming from the series. There was a top nep game release, which is pretty much started out as a meme, but it actually turned out into a decent Space Harrier clone. And it had some pretty good music, and it looked really clean. Other than that, the last Neptunia game to release in the West was Neptunia Sisters vs. Sisters. It's an action JRPG that once again stars the sisters of the main characters. I'm not going to get too much into it since I already have a review on it on the channel, but in short, it's a less polished Tales game. But that's not actually a bad thing because it's not too bad. It's probably the best Neptunia spinoff overall. There's definitely some effort here, mostly in Play Neptune with a fully modeled the city. It's kind of empty, but it was still impressive, and you can walk around and see the city in full time. There was actually a surreal moment I had in Planetune when I stopped and found an NPC and talked to them. And I was kind of confused because most Neptunia games, all NPCs are in the main menu on an overworld map. So that was just something that really stuck out to me. Going forward, we're waiting for the release of the adult Neptune game. It looks more like Sisters vs. Sisters or probably just some polish, so I don't expect anything major to come from that. The company has since confirmed that they're actually working on a numbered Neptunia title. Next year will be the 10th anniversary of Mega Dimension. At this point, fans of Japan don't care. Neptunia went from having a spin-off selling 50k plus in the first week to only selling under CK now with the latest Neptunia release game in Japan. It seems like they've diluted the series with just so many shitty spin-offs that just no one cares anymore and they're trying to just throw shit at the wall to see what sticks hoping to catch lightning in a bottle or whatever. I mean, here's a good idea, Compile. You want to sell Neptunia spin-offs? Make a Neptunia Kart or a Neptunia Smash game. Or maybe a Star Nep game where she transforms into some jet thing because she can actually do that. And it may sound like I'm being harsh on the series, but this is just how the fan base feels for the most part. Neptunia games were never known for their gameplay outside of maybe Mega Dimension and Cyber Dimension. But Neptunia was like comfort food. Like that hometown Chinese restaurant that you go to instead of a steakhouse. A solid zany anime game that put the characters and music first and did everything else second. Also, they need to have a crossover with Blue Archive at this point. Uh, actually, Blue Archive has even more little girls, so Persona wins! You know what? Maybe. And the great words of a random Neptunia fan. No, they're all kind of cute! Yeah, I like their designs! Sexy Loli is totally in this year! Oh yeah, such a perfect collection of archetypes, the girl next door, the tsundere, and the polar opposite twins! I love the variety! R4 definitely doesn't have this!